Good morning. I'm Stuart McDonald, the chair of the board of Bright, and I bring you greetings from the trustees. We're so excited to have everybody here this morning, the start of a new semester and the fall convocation. Believe it or not, this is a little bit cooler, so this is fall in Texas for those of you that it's your first time here. Um, we want to extend a special welcome also to the new students. So thank you all for being here, and please listen to the call to worship. I would like to echo Trustee McDonald's welcome to Bright Divinity School. Good morning. We, we are so glad that you are here. Please rise in either body or spirit. I ask that you join me at the conclusion of the call to worship with an amen or an ashe. Creator, we rejoice in this day as it is a day you have made. God, surely we are glad to gather today to celebrate a new school year and season at Bright Divinity School. We are excited about all that you are doing and will do at Bright. In this time of newness and creation, we look with joy at each of our new students and our returning students. Holy One, we ask that you receive our excitement and the forthcoming work of faculty, staff, and all those who love Bright as an act of honoring you. Thank you, God, for breath and life. Amen. Ashe. Please remain standing. broken and we feel that heat amen in Texas uh, we are grateful for this gathering at the opening convocation and before I pray I want to give you a targeted way in which we might
pray. If you are brand new to Bright, welcome, and how good it is to join with you in unity as we move in this new school year together. If you are in your midst time at Bright, um, whether you are a student, faculty, or staff, you are closer to the end than where you began. And if you are towards the end of your tenure at Bright, faculty, student, staff, trustee, you've come too far to turn around. <laughs> Let's pray. God, for the morning that is broken, we are grateful. Amazed at your glory, amazed that you continue to trust your treasure in earthen vessel. How creative, how generous, how kind, how merciful, how good you are. We're called to invoke your presence, but hallelujah, you are already here moving. It is in you that we live and move and have our being. We might as well not try to move unless we move in you. We thank you, God, for all that you have given us, the many blessings upon our lives. And even in this clay crack jar that we are, you take the hard times and you smooth them out. You take mountains and bring them down. You take valleys and you lift them up so that we might experience your glory and share that glory. It is more than enough that we might even speak up for those and create spaces for those who have no way to find the dew that would fall or the oil that would run. So show us the way and fill us with the courage as we invoke you, we invoke the possibilities of what might be. We give thanks for the days like this, where we can pause and reflect and imagine again as we have learned over the years and what we might learn and discover this year, not just to make us smart, but to make your world better. Thank you for trusting us. And when we cannot trace you, help us to trust you all the more. We pray, God, for our students, that they might not only take this time to be educated, but they would be transformed in the process. We pray for our, our faculty and our staff, that you would give them what they need to give this institution what it needs. We pray in this time, this liminal space, for our administration, especially for our interim president, as we prepare to transition and as we find the one you have called to lead us in this time. We know we can't pray at all, but we trust in everything that you start will be good and you will work it out. We thank you and we bless you and we pray that your spirit will intercede for that which we cannot finish in words, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Just wanted to bring greetings to you on behalf of Texas Christian University and say welcome back to the incoming students. You're entering on a very neat part of your journey, and I want to congratulate all of you. To the continuing students, I just want to say thank you for sticking with us coming back and finishing your journey. And to all the faculty and staff, I just wanted to say, have a great year, make this a good one, and I think it's gonna be wonderful. So thank you very much and welcome on behalf of Texas Christian University. Reading <clears throat> a reading from the Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as spouses adorn themselves for each other on their wedding day. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's peoples. And God, God's own self, will be with them and be their God. 
God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. The same one also said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The overcomers will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. God speaks to us through the reading of the scriptures. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Chancellor Boschini, Dean Miller, faculty and staff colleagues, Dr. McDonald, Reverend Law, members of the Board of Trustees, alumni, friends, supporters of Bright Divinity School, and most importantly, you, the students of Bright Divinity School. May the God of mercy, love, peace, and justice be with us this day and every day of this coming year. Eight decades ago, T.S. Eliot wrote what are perhaps his most quoted words. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. I offer a one-word emendation to Eliot's famous verse, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the next time. It is that short four-letter word that has begun to capture our attention here of late at the Bright Divinity School at Texas Christian University. Next. Our modern word next comes from Old English and Norse roots, nea or nehast, meaning nearest, closest. It is a cliffhanger word, as we are about to be pushed or pulled from where we have been standing, either beckoned or forced to land in a new place. Next often brings the response of phew, or at last, as, one, as when one has been waiting in a long line and the server means you when she says next. For nearly a year now, many in this community have been engaged in a process often described in bureaucratic language as long range planning. As this process has moved along, many of us have adopted a shorthand synopsis to describe where this school might be headed in the coming years. Next, Bright. So by way of inviting all of us into the conversation today about where we might be going, let me offer five suggestions of what could be some key markers of and for the next B-R-I-T-E. First, a school whose vision is a world transformed by God's love, mercy, and justice must be a school that is bold, not brash, arrogant, or brutalizing bold, 
But bold as Rosa Parks, quietly taking a seat on the bus, Cesar Chavez striding through the fields of California under the blazing sun, bold as Martin Luther King 60 years ago yesterday, offering a dream of a new tomorrow, bold as Oscar Romero facing down the death squads in El Salvador, in the name of God, stop the repression. Bold like a growing company of school students demanding that we adults do something to stop arming anyone who wants to strut around with weapons of war. A bold school, I suggest to you, must be willing to re-examine curriculum courses, personal study habits, commitment to community life, attitudes about what it means to be a divinity school. Bold in how we steward our assets and spend our resources. Humbly bold to learn from some other schools who are re-examining their use of real estate, energy consumption, budgeting, and partnering. The second feature of Next Bright, I would suggest to you, is to be radical. The word with Latin origins means literally going down to the roots. Going to the roots means asking fundamental questions as if for the first time. Now, it's not exactly new or innovative for Bright Divinity School to be radical. A review of our history and some of the controversies across the decades will attest. But the very soil in which our roots are grounded has changed. So being radical in the future will not look like being radical in the past. In a conversation with the new Bishop of New York last spring, Episcopal presiding Bishop Michael Curry said he sees God as radically reinventing the church in our time. To ease the anxiety that such talk arouses in many, Curry went on to say, now God has a lot of experience in change management. It's exciting, energizing to be about something new. But being radical need not be equated with simply the novel, rebellious, or avant-garde. When I was in seminary a half century ago, for many being radical meant abandoning institutions, tearing them down. Well, we recently lived through a four-year period of institutional chaos at the highest levels, which nearly brought us to our knees. So might a dimension of being radical moving forward be to rebuild, reshape, reform, but not abandon institutions? Perhaps being radical means recapturing some dispositions and disciplines jettisoned along the way as being too pious or pretentious. No, I'm not suggesting a return to mandatory daily chapel, as was the norm in most seminaries and Christian colleges a century ago. But is once a week sufficient for a deep formation in communal life and worship, especially if that day happens to fall on a day when many of us are not on campus? Okay, I know I'm meddling now. Some say I shouldn't. It's the beauty of being an interim. <laughs> A measure of meddling is in the job description. The greatest challenge of all, I think, if we would be radical moving forward, is the challenge of reconciliation. We cannot long endure the polarization in our nation. 
We are called, I would contend, it is our vocation to be radical recognizers of God's unrelenting grace and unremitting quest for justice. Moving along from bold and radical, we come to the I in next, right? It's the center pole of our tent. There are, of course, a number of candidates for the middle letter in the name of our founders. The first book you knew students were assigned was Intersectional Theology. It recognizes the convergence of oppressive forces, racism, sexism, homophobia, ableism, ageism, that converge to press the boot of, oppress of oppressive forces on the throats of so many in our society. So yes, to intersectional. And yes, to inclusivity more now than ever, when the government of this state and others is attempting to kill offices of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And of course, interfaith increasingly describes this school on a campus and in a cosmopolitan area where many of the world's thousands of religions are represented. But for the middle letter in bright, I land on another I word, which to some may be unfamiliar, interstitial refers to life's in-between spaces, the spaces between the spaces and places, the gaps, the vacuums, out-of-the-way encounters in times and places where one is unexpectedly open to new insights, revelations, maybe even conversions. Rather than lament the diminished social status of schools like ours, I suggest that from the interstitial spaces, we may be best positioned to offer an encouraging word to those at the margins. Once we stop worrying about status, prestige, and social position, we can allow ourselves to be molded and shaped so we flow into the spaces where a word of good news is most needed. I think the gravel-throated balladeer Leonard Cohen was pointing toward it in one of his best-known songs. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. If we care about those who have fallen between the cracks, then we have to weasel our way into the interstitial spaces and places where they have fallen. We're in the home stretch here, just two letters to go. For the T and next bright, I think there could also be several candidates. Truth. Some people, I think actually a lot of people still care about it. Transformational, the type of leadership that will be required if we are to move from where we are to the next place, the next moment, the next faith community. But here I land on perhaps the most obvious T word, theological. We are chartered, licensed, and accredited as a school of theology, a place of God talk, but beyond that, I hope also a place of God walk. That constant ebb and flow of theory and practice, head and heart, thinking and doing, or what the early liberation theologians called praxis. My observation over the years has been that many who find their most fulfillment in a theological school are ones who find God again, as if for the first time. 
And that may involve some profound re-examination, self-scrutiny, letting go of old ideas and understandings, willingness to plunge deep into your own doubts, hoping that new and next faith might be cooked up in that cauldron of questioning. Finally, E, dare I suggest that evangelical, while co-opted by the religious right, is really a good word. It means simply good newsing. But alas, especially in our context, I fear an effort to reclaim it needs to await some future time. We are, of course, a Eucharistic community who gather at table and partake of holy food on a regular basis. But I think an even better word, which encompasses being good news bearers and people who set table for all who come, is ecumenical. Oikomene, the whole household. The entire kit and caboodle, la enchilada entera, the entire scope of God's domain. It, w it means far more than simply Christian denominations holding talks, making nice, singing kumbaya, and then scurrying back to our tribal tents to do business as usual. It means engaging the entire creation, which is groaning to be free. So there you have my suggestions for what might be some key markers of the next bright that may be just beyond our grasp. Let the conversation continue. Bold, radical, interstitial, theological, and ecumenical, just about to break over the horizon and shine bright upon a new day. Now being and doing all these things may seem daunting, even overwhelming, and it is. But the Hebrew scripture does not say you have to do a new thing. Rather, in Isaiah, the prophet says, the prophet quotes, I, the Lord God, the Holy One, the Ruach Spirit, who blows where I will, I am doing it. And that new heaven and new earth held before us in an inspired vision by the Revelation writer, is not ours to build on our own. Again, the divine builder says, I am about doing a new thing. I am making all things new. But perhaps we can help lay some foundations in our work these coming years as next bright breaks in upon us, as next church, next faith community is being born as God's next world is ushered in.
Since we convened last year in August, the Bright community has mourned the passing of many graduates and friends. Today, we remember the loss of two former faculty. Last fall, both TCU and Bright mourned the death of Dr. William E. Tucker, age 90. Known to all as Bill, he earned a Bachelor of Divinity at Bright in 1956. Afterwards, he earned a doctorate at Yale and then returned to Bright in 1966 to serve on our faculty and eventually led Bright as dean from 1971 to 76. He left Bright to become president of Bethany College until TCU invited him back to Fort Worth as chancellor, a position he filled admirably from 1979 to 1998, a time of pivotal growth for TCU. Bill is survived by his wife, Jean, also a TCU graduate, as well as children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Requiescat in Pacha. Also in October of 22, the Bright community lost former faculty member, Dr. Kenneth Cracknell, age 87, a child of the Blitz and forever a Londoner at heart, a former missionary to Nigeria and Methodist minister. He arrived in Fort Worth in 1996 when both he and his wife, Susan J. White, joined the faculty at Bright. Originally, professor of theology and global studies, Bright later appointed him distinguished professor of global studies and interfaith dialogue. He and Susan moved to Vermont in retirement and opened a bookshop, Sutton Books. Right up to his death, he followed keenly the careers of his former students who were pastors, professors, journalists, and activists for interfaith understanding. Requiescat in Pacha. Dr. William Tucker and Dr. Kenneth Cracknell, together with all the graduates and friends who no longer walk with us, may their memory be for a blessing. It's really an honor and a privilege to be a member of the Bright Board of Trustees. Uh, obviously, there's board meetings that we attend and consulting with the president and other leaders in the faculty and administration, but we also do much more um, advocating for Bright in our congregations, in our communities, participating in this conv convocation, and next week we'll be joining with the faculty in a retreat here in town to work on the previously mentioned long-range plan. I'm also pleased to say that 100% of the board financially supports Bright through the annual fund. Trustees serve three-year terms with uh, option to be renewed, and I want to introduce to you this year's three trustees that are being elected. Reverend Bobby Hawley, who's a Bright alum, serves also as the vice president of the Christian Church Foundation in this area, and a member of University Christian Church, where his office is conveniently located. Bobby, if you're here, stand up. Thank you. <laughs> Reverend Evangelina Perez, who's also a Bright graduate. Reverend Perez serves Iglesia Cristiana of Grand Prairie, a bivocational clergywoman. Reverend Perez is also an executive with Alcon, the Swiss American Medical Corporation here in Fort Worth. Nationally, she's the moderator of Obra Hispania, the Christian Church Latinx Association. I'm not sure if Reverend Perez was able to be here. Please welcome her as well. And finally, Reverend Meg Whitmer Fair, who is also a Bright alumna. Reverend Whitmer Fair is Associate Director of Ministerial Relations for the Central Texas Conference for the United Methodist Church. A second career minister, she previously spent 16 years in the hospitality industry. And if you're present, please stand. Thank you. <laughs> Today, we also want to acknowledge and thank one of our longtime trustees, Tim Stevens, and his wife, Sylvia. During this summer, the Stevens made a commitment to donate one of the largest gifts ever received by Bright. Their generosity will make possible a whole new era for this school, creating the Metz Stevens Family Program in future church and communities. Income from this generous endowment gift will enable Bright to hire a person with a proven track record in creative new ministry development. In addition to offering courses for students and lifelong learners, 
the future church innovator will be available to consult with congregations seeking to revive or reorient their ministries. Additional efforts to be supported include research, writing projects, addressing innovative ministries, seminars, workshops, and online resources. These efforts will place Bright at the leading edge among seminaries and divinity schools in this era when church as usual no longer meets the needs of many people. The Stevens are longtime members at St. Christopher's Episcopal Church here in Fort Worth. Their ecumenically minded parish currently shares a building with St. Matthew's Lutheran Church. The Stevens were also generous donors to Bright's Episcopal chair held by Dr. Will Gaffney. I'd like to thank the Stevens and invite them to come forward so that we may acknowledge them and thank them for their generosity. Tim, if you want to come up. Thank you, Tim. And if you want to say a few words, you're welcome to. Thank you very much. What a gift generosity is. All this conversation about next, I'm side-eyeing you. You still have some more months with us. Uh, we are grateful for your presence and continue to pray for your health and our time together. Amen. I'm not in the program, but I know you want to see me because I want to see you. How about you just tell your neighbor, you look good today. Tell your neighbor, you look good today. I mean, it might be the, it might be the kindest thing they hear all semester, so you might tell that to another neighbor. You do look good today. I serve as the search chair of the presidential co uh, search committee, and uh, it is a privilege to serve with this group. I am going to ask all of those who are present on the search committee to please stand. If you are present, please stand, all search committee. I want you all to thank them in advance for their hard work. It's a representation of faculty, staff, and board, and I have, it's been an honor and a pleasure to guide this group. Um, they have been working fearlessly, and we have a proactive candidate recruitment and national advertising. It's been underway since the third week of June. Uh, the committee met for a progress update with our search firm, the Starbeck Search Firm, consulting the team on the 24th, and we are discovering more ways and how to recruit and candidates are coming in literally daily. Um, we are progressing and the position um, is really resonating well in the marketplace. The feedback has been very positive. The opportunity is being received with enthusiasm. Our committee members also offered input on how the pool was developing and um, to hear from all of them uh, the way the names that we are receiving and the gifts that people are, are sharing in their letters and their CV, it's been a blessing, it's been overwhelming. I was a student at Bright, so I'm gonna tell you, it's hard to, to really get uh, an overwhelming response from Bright faculty, amen. <laughs> and so it's been good to, to hear um, their endorsements and their rigorous and thoughtful responses. Y'all don't, don't hold that against me later. And soon we'll be gathering to narrow that pool for the initial set of confidential interviews. Somebody say confidential. So you saw the committee, don't ask them any questions. Because it's important that we confide with faith and with confidence, not secrecy. Trust and believe in the work that is happening in this discernment process, both in the life of those who are discerning and in the group that we have called to entrust in leading this process. 
confide, confidential. It is with confidence that we are believing God and have been overwhelmed with God's presence in this process as we've gotten to know each other and as we will get to know the candidates. And these will be followed by a second round of confidential committee interviews in October. The process remains on track for finalist conversations in late October and to identify the new president prayerfully by the end of November or shortly thereafter if possible. We're still receiving nominations and those are, are closing um, uh, officially, officially, because you know you have the soft official, right? And then the hard time, and so that is uh, that has happened and we will be uh, underway tomorrow. And so be in prayer for the committee, be in prayer for the person, uh, the family, the persons whose lives are being disrupted and they don't even know why until that opportune time comes. Those regular updates can be found on a web and as we uh, progress and you will see the forthcoming information. It's posted on our website at uh, onbrights.edu, uh, the presidential search. I'll be available for community conversation and so if you have questions of me, without asking particular names, I'm here for it. And I am ready to answer and respond to your questions. And I do also know the simplest way that I can also uh, answer you is, I don't know. Um, and so be prepared for any and all of those responses. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you in advance for the ways that you have trusted us as we together trust the work that's ahead and what's next. Good morning. Uh, dear friends, um, the period since last convocation has been mostly characterized by our institution's attempt to push beyond anxiety in order to pursue innovative responses to the significantly changed circumstance in American Christianity and the turbulence that this has caused in theological education. An important expression of innovation was our venture into programmatic change last fall. The outcomes from which helped to inform the recent presentations made by the finalists for the position of director of the Center for Lifelong Learning. Significantly, these outcomes now serve as anchors for an ongoing process in which members of staff, faculty, and trustees have been collaborating in the development of our long-range plan. A decisive step in this venture will be made when these persons retreat together on September 8 and 9. Another expression of innovation over the academic year 2023 to 24 has been our faculty's openness to expand the ways they contribute to administrative life of Bright Divinity School. Last fall, Dr. Lance Poppy agreed to serve as coordinator of the planned video recording studio and smart classroom. And since then, he has been heavily involved along with our hardworking director of technology resources, Reverend Lauren Baxter over there, in the development of this facility on the second floor of the Harrison Building. For some months, until the end of May 2023, Dr. Bar McClure took on the additional role of Director for the Center for Lifelong Learning. This June, Dr. Timothy Sandoval became Associate Dean of Academic Administration, while remaining Associate Professor of Hebrew Bible. Not yet evident in website profiles, is the fact that along with their presently listed professional titles, Dr. Jeremy Williams is now director of the Center for Theology and Justice that will have its soft launch on October 31. Dr. Russ Dalton is now coordinator of vocation development. And with the retirement of Dr. Jim Sanders, who is among us today sitting in the second row to my right, Dr. Natalia Cherry is now Director of United Methodist Studies. 
Dr. Tim Lee, who commenced responsibility for our quality enhancement program last fall, together with Reverend Dr. Fluker, recently organized a wonderful retreat for newly arrived students and those who entered during the academic year 2022 to 2023. In the midst of these developments, our teacher scholar faculty continue to produce impressive scholarly documents for the church, the academy, and public life, and to make presentations in these settings, which reinforce their standing as global leaders in their disciplinary fields. In the interest of time today, I'll only highlight the writing accomplishments or particular writing accomplishments of our newest faculty, who before long may apply for tenure at Bright. Dr. Tomi Oridain, who is not here today because she's unwell, her first single authored book, The Theofeminism of Mercy Amber Oduoye, Ecumenism, Feminism, and Communal Practice, has been published by the University of Notre Dame Press, for which Dr. Oridain was named the inaugural recipient of the publisher's first time author award. Dr. Jeremy Williams's first full length text, Criminalization in Acts of the Apostles, Race, Rhetoric, and the Prosecution of an Early Christian Movement is due for publication by Cambridge University Press in approximately two months from now. Here are two examples of recognition received by other faculty. Dr. Barr McClure has been selected as one of six international and multidisciplinary professors to be named a visiting professor to the Center for Theological Inquiry at Princeton University in New Jersey for their 2023 to 2025 research program. In this intense program, which involves virtual and residential aspects, each scholar will work on their own project in conversation with their cohort and with subject matter experts from around the world with whom they are matched. Dr. Natalia Cherry has been appointed to the Russell and Merle Umstead Ritchie Visiting Chair in Wesleyan Methodist Studies at Candler Divinity School at Emory University. In this academic role, uh, she will teach two courses in the periods that will not affect the full-time exercise of our, her responsibilities at Bright. <laughs> Dr. Tim Robinson produced a curriculum for a program in spiritual direction for army chaplains. This supports the movement towards the finalization of a collaboration in which Bright may offer such a program for army personnel. The following have had five-year reviews. Dr. Barr McClure, Dr. Tim Robinson, and Dr. Tim Sandoval. Dr. Tommy Oridane, Dr. Will Gaffney, Dr. Shelley Matthews, Dr. Timothy Sandoval went on research leave in the academic year just past. And Dr. Nam Soon Kong is presently on research leave. Professor Francisco Lozada, loved by many here, departed from us to take up the position of Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of Faculty at our sister school in Indianapolis, Christian Theological Seminary. After careful search, Ms. Stephanie Voss was hired as a new administrative assistant in the admissions department to replace Ms. Ingrid Keller, who retired from this position. And she's been doing a phenomenal job since she arrived among us. While our stalwart staff and our faculty remain fairly healthy and have been enjoyed reasonably good health during the period behind us, a number experienced the death and or illness of loved ones. And some are still involved in such painful circumstance. Indeed, this morning, we heard from Professor Shelley Matthews. She's not here with us today. 
that her husband, George, has, who has been suffering with cancer, has an experience, a stroke. She asks that we pray for them. I ask that we pray for them and we pray for all of those unknown members of Bright faculty and staff, students, those who are connected to us, who are going through difficult times at this moment. I invite us to stand for a moment of silence. Amen. Good morning, everyone. You can only imagine how excited I am. As we kick off our fall 2023 semester, it is with great privilege and joy to introduce our incoming seminarians who have recently joined the Bright community. They've completed the orientation process, began attending classes, and now are in a position to be inspired, educated, and prepared to serve God's diverse world. So I'm confident that this amazing diverse group of seminarians will help to transform the world with God's love, mercy, and justice as they live into who God is calling them to be. Before I start the introductions, I, I want to share my gratitude and appreciation to our admissions team and others at Bright for their diligent work. Deb Welch and Tiffany Voss, thank you for your commitment to Bright. I would be remiss if I did not recognize once more the generosity of our donors and the senior administrative staff and board of trustees to offer a 100% scholarship covering tuition and fees to all admitted master students to come and thrive for, to Bright for a three-year pilot period. Thank you for your work of justice. Now, let me introduce you to the fall 2023 incoming students. Seminarians, please stand when I call your name and remain standing until your, uh, all of the, the people in your degree plan has been called. And I'm going to ask everyone to hold your applause until I've called all the names. Entering the Master of Divinity program, Amber Baker. Ann Bell. Carly Bold. Demetria Collins. Nathan De La Fuente. Stephanie Dixon, Amy Duggins, Derek Gay, Allison Goldsmith, Maddie Hall, Tomas Hernandez, Dorinda Kahn, Joshua Lucas, Sabrina Martinez, Catherine Nadij, Emma Norton, Christian Nose, Jennifer Pedrick, Cameron Reiki, Shannon Scott Stoneman, Suzanne Taylor, Randall Vaughn, Shay Wilson. Entering the, you may be seated. Entering the Master of Art in Theology and Ministry program, 
Adewale Afagbi. Gerald Appel. Thomas Athenor. Blair Browning. Colby Dixon. Jacqueline Harris. Diane Kay. Nicole Larson, Nicole Phoenix Larson, Sarah Martinez, Jordan Mott, Hannah Newcomer, Deidre Potter with an E, Cheryl Wesley. You may be seated. Re-entering the Master of Theological Studies program, Joshua Arellano. Entering the Master of Theological Studies program, Alec Emery Pettit, Jeffrey Walton. Entering the Doctor of Ministry program, Dennis Carroll, Duela Puevalan, Tyler Sterling. Entering the Certificate of Theological Studies program, Teresa Farrell. Joining the Bright Community as a community as community auditors. Nicole Anderson Cobb, Heather Dean, Nancy Duncan, Jennifer Jacobson, Anthony Jones, Alicia Longhorn, Shannon Little, Carla Lott, Leslie Minor, Courtney Richards, Aaron Sanzero, Shelley Shepard, Lauren Sierra, Lori Silvestri, and Darren Washington. Could everyone please stand and give our incoming students a big round of applause. Returning faculty, staff, students, trustees, alums, and friends, welcome newcomers by rising in body or spirit and saying, we welcome you to Bright Divinity School and invite you to join us on a continuing journey toward transforming scholarship, justice, and practice. We challenge you to develop your gifts and graces for service and to use them on behalf of others. We encourage you to join us in building a community of mutual support, social solidarity, and faithful obedience to the one who blesses us and calls us to be a blessing. Now, new faculty, staff, students, trustees, alums, and friends join their returning colleagues by rising in body and spirit and saying, we rejoice in the invitation to become a part of the life of Bright Divinity School and commit ourselves to doing our part to create a community that treasures learning, value service, and witnesses to God's inclusive love. With God as our helper, we will strive to make bright a community where people are transformed by the renewal of their minds and prepared to pour themselves out for the sake of the world. Stay. Stay. 